Hi everyone, my name is Anita Ladhani. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and an energy practitioner. And today I wanna to talk to you about a very, very important subject called domestic violence. Um, why am I talking about this? Because as always, unfortunately, it's something that is affecting way too many men and women in my personal life and people that cross my path. So I think there's, this is a very important topic to understand what it is, what it isn't, how does it affect us, and how do we deal with it. So what is domestic violence? Well, domestic violence is the emotional, verbal, physical, sexual violence or abuse. It's physical abuse, the hitting, the physical beating or slapping, it's the sexual violence where you're being forced to have sex, even if it's your husband against your wishes. It's the emotional abuse where it's name calling, um, you know, being told you're no good, being criticized, always being told, you know, just various negative things. Um, psychological abuse, you know, being isolated from everyone. Um, whether it's abuse, whether it's violence, it's still we're gonna just call it all domestic violence. It's domestic violence really is about power and control. That's what it comes down to. Um, and it's an epidemic regardless of age, regardless of economic status, regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of your sexual orientation, whether you're gay or straight, it doesn't matter. Whether uh, you're man or woman, it doesn't matter. Um, domestic violence is regardless of whether what your religion is, what your nationality is, um, it affects everyone. Everyone at some point uh, can be impacted by it. So it doesn't, it's not something that is only happening to straight people or to certain groups of people. It can happen to anyone. Um, so what is domestic violence? Well, domestic violence really starts off a lot of times it starts off very small, innocent, you know, what seems like innocent, right? So it may be name calling, it may be, you know, it's little threats, maybe, you know, just feeling like you're being, you know, your, your, your man or woman is being possessive, right? Or just not trusting you or being accused of, you know, you cheating on them or whatnot. Um, and, you know, it starts off almost feeling like it's love. That's the sick part about domestic violence, where it starts off where you think the person loves me. Look how much they love me. That's why they don't want to share me with anyone, and they don't. They want to just spend all their time with me. Um, you know, domestic abusers, um, whether it's man or woman, will apologize. You know, for their behavior, or, or sometimes they'll blame the victim. You know, for for what they're doing. Um, what may start off as something harmless quickly escalates to, you know, wanting to spend all your time with only them, isolating them, isolating the the family member, the wife or the husband from the rest of their friends and family. Um, and it, you know, escalates quickly into if you don't, you know, sort of fall in line and do what they want you to do, then it, there's also threats of, you know, uh, violence or threaten, threatening to kill. Um, there's a cycle of abuse that there's a so-called abuse wheel. So you can always, these days, Google is 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 there. Um, but, you know, when someone is in the middle of an abusive situation, it's, it's almost like they're sitting in the bottom of a well and they don't see a way out. And so this video hopefully is coming to you or hopefully, you know, you're watching it as a rope as sort of, you know, we're throwing you a lifeline so you can actually start to think about your situation, uh, whether you're currently in it or whether you've experienced it. I know one too many men and women who've been victims of domestic violence in some um, shape or form, whether it's the physical abuse that they endured um, at the hands of their love, at, at their partner, or whether it was you know, emotional um, blackmailing and, and uh, emotional abuse. And whether it just is happening now or whether it happened years ago, unfortunately, this is something that is still impacting a lot of these men and women that I'm blessed to work with. Um, it, it plays in your head and it does impact you. This is not something you're imagining. 
This is not you being weak that you can't get over it. No, this seriously impacts you and you have every reason to feel all the emotions that you're feeling, whether it's fear, whether it's shame, whether it's low self-esteem, whether it's, you know, being afraid to get into another relationship, whether it's, you know, it's almost a form of post-traumatic stress disorder because you're replaying a lot of the things that you experience in your head. And every time you replay it, you re-trigger all those physical uh, reactions, the synapses in your brain, where you're reliving the trauma every time you're rethinking about it. Um, so how does it affuse the victims? Well, that's one, uh, affect the victims, that's one way. You know, um, and like I said, it, it, you know, domestic violence victims, you know, um, endure and survive, but they also are, it's, they're damaged. You know, they're, they're parts of them get broken and they can be repaired. Um, causes depression, causes low self-esteem, causes, you know, anxiety, causes, uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of, you know, victims will make excuses for the behavior of the abuser. Um, a lot of times, you know, they will feel helpless. You know, they're unaware that there are services available. You know, that's why they feel it's, it's there's embarrassment. You know, there's, there's, they may not have the support of family and friends that some other people might. Um, and they, part of the domestic violence, you know, um, uh, sickness is, is this insidious sort of way that the, the victim is isolated from others. So then when they finally want to reach out, they've kind of burnt their bridges and it's hard to reach out and say, I need help. Um, you know, a lot of times you're financially dependent on your abuser. Uh, you feel shame, you feel anxiety, you have suicidal thoughts. Uh, you abuse alcohol or drugs. I'm reading from one of the websites because it's too much and I don't want to forget. Um, you know, also, you know, we we make excuses and we keep hoping that, you know, the abuser will stop and the abuser will change. You know, a lot of cultural, religious um, uh, beliefs will, you know, prevent a victim from, you know, even thinking that leaving is an option. Um, so, you know, is, and if you have children together, that makes it even more hard, right, to walk away. So how, how where do you start? Well, if you're in the U.S., um, the 1-800-DOMESTIC-VIOLENCE number is 1-800-799-SAFE, which is 1-800-799-7233. 1-800-799-7233. If you are, are in immediate danger, call 911 call and get yourself out of the situation but depending on your situation call the 1-800 domestic violence number go online and find local domestic violence shelters start to create a plan where you can you know if you can go to counseling and start to repair the relationship if you have a spouse that you know is it's something that you can work with then by all means do it because this is a big decision. I'm not telling you to walk away and leave your spouse or your, or your loved ones, but I am telling you to be, have enough respect for yourself and have enough care for your kids, if there are kids involved, to do the right thing uh, and keep yourself safe and keep your kids safe. Um, kids who are exposed to arguments, parents arguing, kids who are exposed to domestic violence, uh, end up being just as traumatized, if not more, as the victim, as the mother or the father. Uh, and it's not always just the women who are the victims. Unfortunately, men are victims just as bad and just as often. Um, so the cycle of abuse is where, you know, there are times when things are calm, uh, things are going well. You know, it's like their tension is building up and then boom, you know, it's like, it explodes and then there's an episode and then things calm down and then you know the abuser will apologize or sort of you know pull back and things will be okay and then all of a sudden it's like yep it erupts again so um i'm doing this video with the intention that if you or if you or someone you know is going through the situation at least you have an awareness at least you have a ability to identify uh, and name what is it that you're feeling um, I there's ways to get help that you know there's ways if it's extreme there's ways to create a safety plan with the counselor there's ways to to um, 
get restraining orders, but please make sure you do, you're you safe doing that. Um, get help, uh, reach out, go online and Google stuff because these days almost everything you need to know is available online. Not like even, you know, 10 years ago where, where we, resources were, um, you know, not as, uh, not as um, uh, available. But these days there are a lot of resources available. So um, I pray this has been helpful. Um, the last thing I want to tell you is if you are someone that has experienced domestic violence and you find yourself experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder, experiencing depression, experiencing anxiety, experiencing um, feeling um, you know suicidal, then there is help out there. You know, get to go go see a therapist immediately. Go talk to your doctor uh, if you need to take some medication to address it, but do something about it. There is help out there. there you're not alone in this, uh, and there is always a way to get through it. Um, so as always, I, I pray everyone is safe and in loving, um, nurturing relationships. Um, and uh, if you're not, then I pray that you have the courage to do whatever it takes to get yourself in a safe um, relationship, safe environment, uh, and then eventually, you know, a safe place. Love and light. Take care. God bless.